7.3 multiplication properties of exponents today is just another step in working with power properties if you are asked to simplify x to the fifth going to the third first off let's consider this third and so again let's look at the um, general idea for this which is the third means I want x to the fifth x to the fifth x to the fifth right because 3 means I want 3 of these out there well based off what we learned yesterday I also want x x x x x three sets of five x's which in our experience means 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 sorry so that equals x to the 15th so using your common sense here, how do you think that we could take a shortcut? Because if I gave you x to the 93rd to the 100th power, you don't want to put 100 of these and then put 93 in each one. There has to be a faster way to kind of get there using common sense. And so to me, 5 plus 3 is not 15, plus the only reason I would add is if it was x to the 5th times x to the 3rd. So that rule is not it. To me, what I see, though, is if I multiply 3 by 5, I do get 15. And that actually is your rule. Here's how I think about that rule and how I remember that rule. If I was to see five parentheses three, or any time our numbers are separated by parentheses, it means multiply. Well, look at these two numbers. Three is separated by five through a parentheses, which should indicate that instinctually you need to multiply the five and the three, only because they're exponents, not with a number in front, because that would be something different. But in terms of your exponents, it means that you are going to multiply. So when taking a power, to another power multiply the exponents again not the bait not the coefficient which would be the front number but the exponents so let's look at some examples so you can begin your practice again be sure to pay attention to the work that is shown so you can have this or show the same level of work in math at excel if necessary so if you're looking at this x to the 15th to the 8th again here's what i see i see an 8 separated by 15 by parent separated from 15 by parentheses which means it equals 8x to the 15 times 8 not plus 8 that would be the other the stuff that we did before so 15 times 8 is 120 which is what I end up with all right so that's the first step recognizing that separated by parentheses means multiply make sure you know that again that has to be an instinct here your negative 8 is separated from 13 by parentheses, which means it's x to the 13 times negative 8. Which means it's negative 104. But remember, we can't leave a negative exponent. Again, I was about to stop until my instincts kicked in. A negative exponent means it wants to move. If the computer marks you wrong for putting that, switch it, but understand that this is the right answer for any teacher, not the computer. Remember, the computer just goes off of what the programmer told it, but the programmer might not remember to switch it. I don't think I programmed all of those. Now, what happens if there's more than one? Well, we saw what happens when we do 5 times 3, but what happens when we do x plus 1 times 6. Don't we distribute that 6? Yes, same thing here. If there's more than one base, you simply distribute that base. So that would be b to the 1, because remember that's 1 times negative 9, e to the negative 15 times negative 9. Again, that 1 is there is because there is 1b in that parentheses being multiplied by negative 9. Again, I am distributing this to both exponents and so that's b to the negative ninth and again simplifying is is going to be very important e to the 135th but everybody is not happy and so who moves would be your b so again it's step one step two and then in the end you end up with e to the 135th over b to the ninth because again the B wanted to move down that is step by step by step now this looks kind of like solving and it is going to be kind of like solving in the fact that if you don't organize your steps you're not going to be able to find the right answer 
And I know you. some of you have other ways to find the right answer. I just hope, again, you're working for it because at some point you have to understand it because math concepts loop into themselves. Same thing here. R to the 4 going to the 5 eighths power. Again, that will just be 4 times 5 eighths. I'm going to work this out the long way because I think it's good to know your fraction rules. Whenever you multiply a whole number by a fraction, you multiply the whole number to the top, which means that that will be 20 over 8. And then reducing that, both of those can be divided by 4, which means 5 over 4. No, 5 over 2. And so that will be R to the 5 halves would be your final answer there. Or use your calculator and get the same answer. But again, understanding these rules on your own is going to help you later on. So that's why I want to make sure I at least showed you when you multiply a whole number times a fraction, multiply the whole number to the top. Now what happens when we add numbers to this? Because remember I said we multiply the exponent. If you go back to your note, it should be multiply the power. Or whenever a power is going to an exponent, multiply the exponents. This is not an exponent, which means this just gets that number. So this becomes 8, because remember that 8 is going to the first power. D is going to the negative eighth power. And so you end up with 8 to the negative fourth, d to the 32nd. Make sure you understand that. Again, 8 to the negative fourth, because 8 was just regular, and we distribute that negative fourth to it. And then negative 8 times negative 4 is positive 32. Again, that is step 1. That is step 2. Step 3 is that number needs to be happy. And while we make it happy, we're also going to go ahead and convert it, because I don't think that's too big of a number. So it ends up being d to the 32nd over 4096. Again, the reason this moved down is because the 8 to the negative 4th. If you wanted to add a step in between this, then it would be d to the 32nd over 8 to the 4th. But then again, all I did was convert that into that. What happens if I see this? Well, we saw this before. That is my number my coefficient and that is my base to a power so what I'm going to do is turn this into 9 to the third because again that is true times 10 to the 6 times 3 because I only multiply the exponent that makes this uh, 9 to the third which is 729 times 10 to the 18th and this is where what I talked about in the last lesson helps the decimal is not behind the first digit. It needs to be 7.29, but notice it moved two spots. So whatever way I shift this 18, it's got to go two digits, or two numbers, because I moved it two spots. This was 700. It is now 7. That got smaller. 18 should get bigger, again, by 2, which makes it 20. Because I moved it two spots to get it to where it needs to be, that has to go two spots in that whatever direction it was. If that number would have got smaller than that, I'm sorry, if that number would have gotten bigger, then that would have went to 16. And then G, which is just a whole bunch of stuff. First thing I would do whenever you see a bunch is get rid of these exponents by distributing. So it'll be S to the 3 times 14 fifteenths, T time to the negative 5 times 14 fifteenths s to the 4 times 3. Get rid of the big parentheses and everything kind of simplifies. So again, s to this number, because that times that, t to that number, and then the other s to that. I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator here just because. So 14 over 5. t to the And there's another way to do it, but I want to make sure that we get to the answer appropriately. Remember, that's going to be negative, and then s to the 12th. 
and we're still not done and we're not done for two reasons there's two s's first off so what's 12 what will we do with these two numbers based off of what we learned well they're not separated by parentheses which means we don't multiply remember i told you to use common sense here they're not separated by parentheses which means we don't multiply which means the only thing i could do with these two things is what i did in the last lesson which is add so 14 14 over 5 plus 12 oh. let's do it the other way it's 168 over 5 again if you're gonna write a note make sure you put you did s to the 12 plus 14 fifths because that's where that came from still not done there's one more rule that's being broken that we cannot break and that is the rule of a negative exponent which means in the end we end up with s to the 168 over 5 over t to the 14 thirds yes it's ugly but you have to know your rules and that is why i said in the very first thing to make sure you start working on your rules because you have to know them instinctually you have to know when to add you have to know when to multiply you have to know when to cancel which would be zero power and you have to know when to move it, which would be a negative power or negative exponent. So just, again, be careful with what you're doing there and make sure you're keeping up because we're going to get into division, I believe, next week. So remember to study, study, and study more. Just because you finish homework again, it doesn't mean you know the material. And I think I said this in the last part. Don't just work to finish the homework at this point. You need to make sure that you can actually get it done quickly. And if you can't do a problem, and I won't say in like super fast but if you can't do a problem by hitting similar question going to your paper and smoothly getting from where you are to the end and I won't say fast but efficiently without like making a mistake or having to think am I supposed to multiply am I supposed to add am I supposed to move then you're really not ready yet so I'm not saying this to, to say you should torture yourself with these questions but I'm saying that if you finish your homework in 10 minutes then maybe you should spend more time because again 10 minutes I don't think is enough for you to really know the material but again um, until you're fluent with the steps you run the risk of making small mistakes and when you take a test and make small mistakes that's where F comes from or where your A turns into a C or your B turns into a D so just be careful and again make sure you're asking questions showing me your work good luck and have a good day